With our grinders dialed in, let's take a look now at brewing coffee beverages on both of these machines. Now, both models have a dedicated button for Espresso and Espresso Lungo. And as far as the programming goes, it's going to be the same process for both of them. Now, we saw in the menu that we can set our temperature and pre-infusion on the Velasca Prestige, but we can also make some changes to the coffee strength, meaning how much ground coffee is being used per shot. I'll cover that, as well as the press and hold programming to get your volume set to your cups, how to make a times two beverage, and how to use that bypass doser to use pre-ground or decaf coffee if you have guests who happen to want that. So, let's get brewing. So to start with the menu on our Velasca, we have the espresso. Now, before we brew that, however, let's take a look at how we would program our universal strength setting. Gaja uses the term aroma strength to indicate the amount of coffee being ground for each shot that you brew. Now, this button corresponds with the number of filled in beans on the right side of the screen. Right now we're at three, and as you continue to press this button, you'll see those bean icons fill in. This is a universal setting that will affect both drinks that you're brewing with. So, if you wanted to make, say, a lighter Lungo, for instance, you would want to adjust to a different setting before brewing. Now, what happens when you go over the edge from five? Well, that's how you get to your scoop icon, and that's how we're going to use the bypass doser. But for now, I want to show you just how simple it is to brew an espresso on our Gaja Velasca. Let's go up to strength five because I'd have it no other way and simply press and brew. And as you can see, our espresso is basically all crema. I am in love with the Velasquez 10 setting grinder. It does some of the best shots of espresso that you can get on a machine at this price range. That's our espresso. So let's take a look though at the espresso lungo button. Now I'm not just gonna be pressing this, I'm going to be pressing and holding this. That's how you access the machine's memo function. And what that does is it's smart enough to remember, hey, how much liquid did I dispense for that? And this is how you program the total volume of your drinks. Now, if I was really gonna drink this coffee, and you know, maybe I will off screen, I would rather have this at more of a mild medium setting. Then I'll go ahead and press and hold the Espresso Lungo button. We'll have an icon appear on the screen, letting us know that the machine is ready to save our setting. Then at any point during the brewing process, we simply press the aroma strength or confirmation button again to let the machine know that we've reached our desired volume. All right, let's take a look. And with the check mark on the screen and the memo icon, we know that we have now saved our beverage. I always love seeing these tall coffees and glasses like this. That cascading foam reminds me of a nice nitro beer, but this is a bit of an upper, not a downer. But if we ever want to program our drinks again, simply press and hold that button again. When the memo icon appears on the screen, you're back again to program to a new volume. Now that we've covered programming, let's take a look at a bit of a secret menu item. Now, it's not too much of a secret, but most Gaja Super Automatic Espresso machines can double up on your beverage simply by pressing the button twice. Now, the unique thing about Gaja's machines is that they don't simply double the volume of liquid, but they'll actually perform two grind and brew cycles. Now, what that means is that if you've got a guest, say, who wants to have the same drink as you, you can press that button twice and repeat them one after the other. But the other great advantage is, say, if you were making your Lungo, for instance, and you wanted that volume, but you wanted twice as much actual ground coffee, you can use it to basically double the total quantity of caffeine in your cup, 
for a really big kick right in the morning. Now, let's go ahead for that kick, actually, and go up to our strength of 5. Now, let's demo the times 2 function using the espresso. Again, there's no indicator on these buttons. You'll simply press them twice. Give yourself a brief delay while pushing, and you can see the 2x icon displayed on the screen. That's how you know that the machine is about to perform a times 2 brew cycle. Now, you may have noticed that I was getting a little close to the danger zone on that one, but the great thing is with these machines that if at any point during the brewing process you would like to stop, simply press the aroma strength button and it will terminate the brew process where you are. That way, if you're getting a little too close for comfort as far as your total drink volume goes, you can simply stop the process before making a mess. Now, I'm going to have one of these espressos. For my last trick, let's take a look at using that bypass doser. Now, again, we'll simply press the aroma strength until the scoop icon appears. So there is a little bit of doing when it comes to using the bypass doser correctly. Now, it's good to make sure that you have good pre-ground coffee that is suitable for espresso. So not just anything will do. You want to make sure that when you buy something, the package specifically indicates that it can be used for espresso. Now, what you need to do then is use the included scoop and take a heaping scoop first. Give it a tap, and if you have room left over, scoop a little bit more. You want to make sure that there are no crevices filled. But it's important to make sure also that we do not compact the coffee in the scoop. You can actually max out the pressure in the brew group and it will cause the machine to dump the shot. So you want to take something like the flat edge of a knife and simply level off that scoop. With that done, you're ready to insert the coffee into the brew group. So we'll put a lid back on our coffee and go ahead and open up the bypass doser. Simply tap the top of your scoop gently to load the coffee into the doser. Now, we'll go ahead and brew our espresso. And as you can see, you can produce a crema-rich shot of espresso even using pre-ground coffee. Now, this is a terrific option if you've got guests who'd prefer decaf and you've got caffeinated beans in the hopper. But it's also important to note that the quality of your shots that you get with this pre-ground is going to come down to the quality of the coffee that you're using to brew. Pre-ground coffee loses its crema and its CO2 much faster than whole beans. So if your can has been sitting in the pantry for months, you may not be surprised then if your shot looks a little weak compared to what you're getting from freshly ground beans. So if you have guests, maybe pick up a uh, new can for them before you get brewing.